I said, hallelujah. Would you do me the honor and the privilege, and I know I've got a time that I'm going to work with here, so don't start my time yet <laughs> until I open the Word of God, but would you do me the honor and the privilege of doing something I think we don't do enough sometimes in the body of Christ in the West. And that is salute and appreciate and celebrate the angels of the house that God gives to us. Yeah, it's right to do it. I said it's right to do it. Now, for those of you who were just practicing and are slightly unaccustomed to such celebration, I'll take that one for me. But if this is your man and woman of God, oh, okay, 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 thank you, thank you. Thank you. We celebrate the angels of the house, the man and the woman of God with the vision of World Changers Church International. 36 years of changing the world and the body of Christ. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Dr. Creflo Dollar, Dr. Taffy, we honor you, sir. We honor you, ma'am. We salute you. Not only for your work's sake, but for who you are in the kingdom of God. One more time, give it to him. I'm not playing with this. I mean, look at this. And to Jesus be the praise and the glory. Now I am going to get to the word. I have learned that a message need not be eternal to be immortal. And so I'm going to get to it, but we're going to get to it rather quickly. I, I have with me my wife Priscilla, my, our youngest son Seth, who just turned 17 on Thursday and part of his gift he said I want to go to World Changers Church I, I want that to be part of my birthday gift so I brought them God bless you Priscilla and Seth we honor you thank God for them I see brother Ben Tankard so good to see you prophet Karn is here he he he's someone that God's just using and maturing in the message of the grace of God and he said to me a few uh, nights ago we were talking and he, when he heard I was coming he said I'm he's I'm coming you going to you going to world changes he said I'm I'm, I'm coming <laughs> And I said, well, come on, sir. And God is using him so tremendously. And he said, you know, your message and ministry has been feeding me. So I was honored to see him this morning. Would you salute prophet Brian Kahn? God's using him in such a great way. And I've got a son here in the ministry somewhere, Rex Ricks. Where are you, Rex? There he is. Pastor Rex Ricks, man of God. Good looking young man. Would you lay your hands upon somebody close to you? If you don't mind, I mean, if you, if, if you don't mind, if you trust them, lay your hands on them. And don't hold their hand. Lay your hands on them. Now you say, Bishop McClendon, you're being rather specific about this because Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And he didn't say apostles that believe or pastors that believe or prophets, evangelists. He said them. Now, if you're next to someone you trust and you don't mind talking to, look at them and say these words to them. Say, I am one of them. No, no, no. Talk stronger than that. Tell them, I am one of them that Jesus was talking about when he said, and these signs shall follow them. I'm one of them. Jesus said, they shall lay hands on the sick, 
and they shall recover. Now, now tell them, I don't know where sickness, distress, disease, disorder has attempted to raise its head in your life. But the moment I laid these hands on you, a recovery began somewhere in your life. Now receive it in the name of Jesus. Keep your hand on him. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, give me about 60 seconds of Holy Ghost prayer. Just 60 seconds in the spirit. Just, just 60 seconds. In the name of Jesus, just 60 seconds in the spirit. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. In the name of Jesus, recover. In the name of Jesus, be restored. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we count it down. Now, if you're believing God with me, just lift your hands right there and begin to receive. Just lift your hands and receive. Mm. <laughs> Father, we bless you and we thank you for your presence in this house. Moses declared that your presence is what distinguishes your people from all the other people on the face of the earth. It is that your presence goes with us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the integrity of your word, for the intelligent Holy Spirit who is with us and in us, and for your people, for they are your inheritance in the earth. And now in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every work of the enemy. Satan, we declare to you, your contracts are canceled and your power is broken. We command you to loose our brothers and let our sisters go free. And we declare this a day of revelation, of illumination, of breakthrough, of celebration, of release, of restoration. And in the name of Jesus, now we release the spirit of wisdom and of revelation knowledge in the anointed Jesus. And in his anointing, we release the ministry of angels in this place. All of those angels that have earth assignments connected to this people under the sound of my voice. And we declare, Lord Jesus, we shall be bettered, empowered, lifted, illuminated, and gain understanding from having been with you in Jesus name and everyone who agreed with the man of God said it is so but would you clap your hands one more time and give praise hallelujah to the Lord you may be seated in the presence of the Lord and let me say what an honor and what a privilege it is to be here at World Changers Church International and to be sharing with you on this, your 36th anniversary as a church and a people of God. What a work and what a wonder you are in, in the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. Give yourselves one more time a great God bless. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask you to open with me in your Bibles very quickly to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. And I'm going to begin the reading of the Word of God 
at verse number 32, Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to begin the reading at verse number 32, and then I'm also, I'm sorry, I'm going to begin the reading at verse, yeah, at verse number 32. And then I'm going to go very quickly to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, and that shall serve as bookends, if you will, thank you, that will serve as bookends, if you will, for the word that the Spirit of grace has given us to share with you this morning. Once again, Dr. Dollar, let me say I am honored, sir, and I thank God for this invitation. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 32, and when you're there, say, I am. am. And the Word of God reads, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Look at verse 35. Women received their dead raised to life. Now, I could go on there, but I want to skip for the sake of time down to verse number 39. And I want you to read this, and I want you to remember that this was in your Bible when you came in. (laughs) That, That I didn't write it there, I didn't put it there, it was there. Watch this, verse 39, and said, all and all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Wait a minute. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Would you say, did not receive the promise? Did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. Oh, goodness. When they were singing, the best is yet to come, I was about to run through here because that's exactly what the Lord said to me. He said, I want you to minister on something better for us, and I want you to tell the people of God that the better is upon them now. It's upon them now. It's not about to happen, not getting ready to happen, not fixing to happen. It's on you now. And one of the things that God is doing through your man and woman of God is stewarding not only you, but the body of Christ into something better that Jesus has right for us. I want you to get this. It says, it says uh, they did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, watch this, that they should not be made perfect, that word there means complete or whole, apart from us. Now, I want to say something here because this is Hebrews chapter 11. This is the faith chapter. This is the Faith Hall of Fame chapter. And it begins, Hebrews 11, you you know it. I mean, I'm in a faith house. This is a house faith built. And, And one thing, you don't need me to come teach you faith. You got that. You know, when mama can cook, you don't send out for cooking very often if she can cook you. So, so, so this is the faith hall. And I, like so many, have been raised in the Word of God. I was raised a Baptist boy. I got filled with the Holy Ghost very young, came into uh, the reality of the integrity of the Word of God. When I got filled with the Holy Ghost, it was, you know, it was Brother Hagen and, and, and Brother Copeland I listened to, and the apostle of faith, was, when I moved to Los Angeles, was right down the street, Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. Yeah, yeah, his memory is worth celebrating all the time. And God taught me the principles of faith, and I walked in them, and, and, and I didn't have the assignment to teach it. It wasn't my assignment in the body to teach it. As a matter of fact, I didn't really feel the grace on my life to teach it. I was living it. I was walking by it. Now, if you saw me on television, you wouldn't have thought I was a faith preacher, so to speak. 
but I was living it. And it was to the degree that uh, I was living it to the best I, I could. There was a time when I thought I was in faith in some areas and the enemy started wrecking stuff in my life. And, 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 and I went to the Lord, I said, God, I'm your boy. <laughs> You know, I, I've been doing this since I was seven. I was called at 15. I've been preaching, and the enemy has come and wrecked my life in some areas, and I'll never forget it. I, I said, Lord, uh, what's going on? And he said to me, there's some areas of your life where you are in faith, and there's some areas of life where you're not. And he said, I'm going to take you through a faith exam. The Bible says, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. And he showed me, he said, there are things that you can get by your gift and by your anointing, but you can only keep with your faith. Are you still there? And I would have the apostle come every year because I didn't feel, you know, uh, the grace to teach it. Uh, I would have Apostle Bryce come every year and teach faith to our people there in Los Angeles. Three nights he'd come every year. And I, I, I lived by faith and I walked by faith. But there was a point at which, uh, and this was, not the, this was not the fault of the fathers of the faith. This was not the fault of the fathers of the message. It was something that was happening in the hearers. Uh, man, I, 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 it was something that was happening. You know, the, when, you know, when the Bible says about the, the children of Israel, it said the word didn't profit it because it was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. Nothing wrong with what was preached. It was what wasn't being added to it in the hearer. And what began to happen is the faith, uh, the, the, that influence, it began to become very burdensome, very technical. I would travel the nations of the earth and uh, the United States of America, and I would see people struggling and tedious with their faith, and their Christianity had become a burden because they were wondering if they didn't dot every I or cross every T, if they didn't do everything exactly right, they felt they would go back to square one and have to start all over and their faith projects would fail. And I went to the Spirit of God and he began to show me, he said, son, there's something that I am going to restore now to the body of Christ to add with what you have received so that your Christianity becomes as I intended. Jesus said, his yoke is easy. Come on, say amen to this. And he said, his burden is light. But when I looked out at the body of Christ, I didn't see people in an easy and light Christianity. I saw them in a tedious, burdensome, heavy Christianity that wasn't working for them. And I said, God, something is wrong here. And it was 2011. When the Spirit of the Lord began to reveal some things to me, and, and, and in point of fact, he wouldn't let me preach some of it until recently. It had to marinate in my own spirit. First, are you still here? And I remember, I remember Dr. Creflo, when the Lord started showing me these things in my little office, I would get up and run around, scream and yell, and I'd sit back down and, and write some more and hear some more, and I would get up and say, God, and I remember one day, I said, God, if I preach this, <laughs> I see your pastor smiling, because I, I said, God, if I preach this, people are going to say this is too good to be true. And I'll never forget, uh, Pastor Rex, the Spirit of the Lord answered me back very quickly. He said, yes, and when they say that, tell them it's so true that it can only be good. <laughs> you, you didn't hear what I did. He, he said, tell them this is so true that it can only be good. Somebody say something better. something better. Say it again, something better for us. Better. Now, now, now here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to see. In Hebrews chapter 11, we have the hall of fame of faith. It begins, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You know that. Verse number four, it says, by faith, Abel. By faith, verse five, Enoch. By faith, verse seven, Noah. By faith, verse eight, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. A a and it goes on to talk about all that these men and women accomplished by faith. Are you still with me? 
and by their faith. But then, when it gets down to verse 39, having, now watch this, having artic, oh please pay attention, having articulated all the things that these people's faith did. All that stuff that their faith accomplished. Are you still here? Then it says, and all these, they obtained a good testimony through faith, but they did not receive the promise. Wait! Wait a minute. So, so, getting people raised from the dead. Uh, Abraham finding a city that built a uh, uh, all that stuff, all the miracles, all the breakthroughs, all that stuff, the Hebrew writer says, was not the promise. Right. So, uh, so then it is possible to get some things with your faith. Ain't nobody saying nothing to the preacher but actually not be living in the promise. Now, in their case, they were not living in the promise because the work was not yet finished. You and I, Kebo Rasimishta, are living in another covenant where the work is finished. Are you still here? Yes. I said, are you still with me? Yes. And so he says, they didn't receive the promise. Watch this. God having provided, please hear me, hear what I'm saying and don't hear what I'm not saying. God having provided something better for us. Something better than living by your faith alone. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Come on, come with me here. Come with me. Something better than living by your faith alone. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell them, come easy. We're going in here. We're going all the way in here. So now the question is, what is the promise? Because the Bible says they didn't get it. <laughs> Are you still here? And then what is the something better? Are you still with me or have you left me now? What is the something better? And who is this us? So something must be established now if you and I are going to understand and fully come into what the Spirit of grace is wanting us to see and to understand. And I'm going to say some things that may be a little challenging to your ears, but, but you'll get it. Because this is the first place God has let me preach this other than my own place. I'm telling you the truth. It's the first place. And he put me on assignment. And for many of you, some of the things I'm going to say is not going to be revelation, but it is going to be confirmation of what the Spirit of grace and your man and woman of God have been bringing you into. Now watch this. Watch this. What was the promise? You've got to go back to uh, a Genesis chapter, oh God, Genesis chapter number 12 to understand what this promise is. And you've got to understand that Jesus of Nazareth, in his earthly ministry, is not a new covenant preacher. I, I just, I'm going to need a minute, because see, I get to leave. The, the, the prophet, the, the apostle has to stay here. <laughs> but you've got to understand that, that Jesus of Nazareth, in his earthly ministry, everybody say earthly ministry. Amen. Say it again. He said in his earthly ministry. Je in his earthly ministry was not a new covenant preacher. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ did not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, 
Now, he said this himself. You read it. He said, if I bear witness of myself, then my witness is not true. So that means he didn't bear witness of himself. True. Teach. Ah, Jesus. The, the, the Lord told me I could go here, so you must have been treading some ground. I, <laughs> he was not a new covenant. He said himself that he came to fulfill the old covenant. This is a place of understanding. So I, I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of things in the scripture. Uh, I, uh, in other places, I might just go on, but, but you are worried people. Go to Matthew chapter 5 very quickly. Now, this is something we've got to understand. Oh, I wish I could go down that road completely. I can't. Woo! I can't. <laughs> I, I can't. But Jesus was not a new covenant minister. He came to fulfill the old. Now, at times, everybody say, at times. At times, he would give flashes of the new, and he would lay down principles of the new. And that's why his followers were often confused about what he was doing and how he was doing it. And if you're going to walk with a man and woman of grace, there are times when you're going to have to just follow them, even though you don't know exactly where they're leading you, because they're doing something better. I wish I had a body I could really preach in. Something, somebody tell something better. So, so, so now here, here, let me give you an example. Go to Matthew 5. Let me stay up here because I'm running too much. Matthew chapter 5, are you still here? Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Oh, this is one of those scriptures that we quote wrong and, and, and don't fully now, look at what Jesus said. He says, do not think, verse 17, that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill or to fill full. I came to fill it up full. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Now, watch this. Watch what? He said, for surely I, and this, this is the part we, 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 we get wrong when we quote it. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or tittle, which is the equivalent of a comma or period, will by no means move from the law till all is fulfilled. Now hear what he said. He said, nothing will be removed from the law until it is all fulfilled. And he, oh God, and he said, I came to fulfill it. So, so if he said it won't pass away until it's all fulfilled and he came to fulfill it, then what happened when he fulfilled it is it was moved out of the way. Oh God! You say, Bishop McClendon, how can you say such a thing? Because I can read. <laughs> look, look, look at Colossians chapter 2, verse number 12. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 12. Are you still with me? Yes. Colossians chapter 2 and verse Kobarishtande. Verse number 12. Are you still here? Yes. Watch this. It says, buried with him in baptism. Now, this baptism is not referring to water. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not referring to water baptism. Hebrews 6 tells us that in the Scripture, there is the doctrine of baptisms, plural meaning there is more than one baptism spoken of in Scripture. Our problem is, in the body of Christ, whenever we see the word baptism, we impose water on it. When the fact is, there's more than one baptism. There is the baptism with the Holy Ghost. There's the baptism with fire. There is the baptism with water. There is the baptism of repentance. 
And then according to Romans 6, there is the baptism into Christ's death, Romans 6. Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, he's not talking about water, who were baptized into his death. This is what Paul calls in the book of Colossians the operation of God, that we're to have faith in the operation of God. We have to understand that the passion, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, and the seating of Christ Jesus at the right hand of God was a military operation. It was a covert op. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. If you're in the military, you understand. It was a covert op. The Bible calls it the operation of God. That in the passion, the, the, the death, uh, the, where Jesus becomes sin in the God, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the seating. See, the gospel is not just death, burial, resurrection. The gospel is death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seeding. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you and also which you stand, that Christ first of all died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was, uh, was raised. Are you still here? But then it says he was seen. Oh no, you missed it. He was seen after his resurrection. See, and if you don't see him after his resurrection, you will keep living in the old. I'm, I'm going to say that again. And this is why And this is why three-fourths of your and my new covenant is written by the apostle Paul because he was the apostle that was given the grace to see what happened after the resurrection. I don't have time to get into that. So this baptism huh, that we're talking about here is the Roman 6 baptism, which is called the baptism into Christ's death. The scripture teaches that you and I were baptized into Christ's death. We were buried with him my God, ah, in that baptism in which also you were raised with him through faith, there it is, in the working. The New King James says working. The King James says operation. It is speaking here about a military op. I, I, need, I need to give you one other passage of Scripture because I'm flowing like you said, uh, Apostle. Uh, I'm going to say stuff that ain't in the notes. Go to Romans 6 real quick. Go, go to, I, 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 you've got to see this. You've got to see this. Go to Romans 6. I believe it is verse number 3. If you can uh, put that up. I'm coming back to Colossians 2. Now watch this. He says, or do you not know? See, because knowledge is key here. If, uh, if you don't know this, there's some things you're going to miss out on that you should be enjoying. Watch this. He says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized, again, this is not water, into Christ Jesus, we're baptized into his death. Now, this word baptized there, it is the Greek word baptizo. It literally means, watch this, to be immersed, to be enveloped in, or to be covered by. So, water baptism is immersion in water. That's why it's called water. <laughs> That's why it's called water. Because there are other kinds. Now we're talking about the baptism into Christ's death. Let me see this. It says, well, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. Let me read on, verse number four. Therefore we were buried with, why? Because we were baptized. We were buried with him through this immersion into his death. Hey. Huh. That, that just as Christ Jesus are you still with me? Yeah. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in this newness of life. Now here's what the scripture teaches. It says, and we were united together, the scripture says, in his death. That word united together is the Greek word sumphutos. It literally means, watch this, you can look it up in your strong, W.E. Vines, whatever. It literally means, watch this, to be together through a process. Oh God. 
He says, we were united together with him. We were baptized. This is an immersion. And we were united together. It means to be together through a process. Somebody say, together, together. through the process. So here's what happens. In the operation of God, the covert operation of God, this is why the scripture says that none of the princes... Archaon in Greek, which doesn't just mean natural princes, it means principalities and spiritual magistrates at will. It says none of the princes of this world knew what God was doing when he crucified Jesus. Had they known it, they would not have crucified. They would have left him alone if they knew God's covert op. And here is the covert up. The Bible says we were baptized into his death. One, again, you can look at the word. It means to be enveloped or enveloped. This is a $20 bill. When I put this $20 bill in this envelope, this $20 bill has been baptized. Ain't nobody saying nothing to the preacher. It has been baptized into this envelope. Now, you don't see the 20. Ah! What you see is the envelope. But whatever happens to the envelope happens to the 20. Because the 20 has been baptized into the envelope. So I was buried with him. Not your neighbor said, you didn't see me, but I was there. You didn't see me. I was raised with him. I was resurrected with him. I ascended with him. And when he sat down, I was... Sit down, sit, sit, sit. Nudge your neighbor and alabore vashtonde. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor. That means whatever happened to him also happened to me. Heaven has recorded that I already died with whatever the devil's trying to kill me with. Heaven has recorded. <laughs> Grab your neighbor's hand and say, whose report? Heaven has recorded, I have already overcome whatever difficulty I'm dealing with. Heaven has recorded. Sit down. See, this is why you've got to understand that the word of faith and the word of grace are the same word. The Bible talks about the word of faith. It also talks about the word of grace. Are you there? It's the same word. Faith is the force that is released when it is spoken. But grace is the realm from which it originates. Uh, I'm going to show you something in the Word here in just a moment. Nudge, some, n- nudge your neighbor and say, something better for us, something better for us. <laughs> so now, Jesus of Nazareth is finishing this old covenant. When he finishes it, according to the book of Colossians, go back there real quick. I'm, I'm working here. 
when he, when he finishes it, look at verse number 12 of chapter 2 of Colossians again. Buried with him, we were together with him through this whole process, in which also we were raised with him through faith in the working and operation of God who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead or separated from God, because of your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven you. Does that sound like something that happens when you confess it? Or something that's been done before you confess it? Having, ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Watch this. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements the performance-based religion. The religion in which if you don't do this, you can't get that. Ha uh, having wiped out the hand, writing of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way. Watch this, having nailed it to the cross. Now you just got a boatload of revelation there from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul just told you, when you see Jesus on the cross, you are no longer just to see his body, you are also to see the law. On the cross. Are you still here? Now, when he did that and finished the work, he fulfilled the promise that God made in Genesis 12 to Abraham and to Jesus. Lay your hands upon yourself and say, I will receive this by the spirit of revelation and by the spirit of grace. That when he finished and fulfilled the old covenant, he fulfilled the promise, not a promise, the promise. See, the Bible says all those old covenant saints and, and, and everyone who is listed in Hebrews chapter 11 is an old covenant saint. They're all old covenant saints. Are you still here? And Jesus, when he went through his passion, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating, he fulfilled the old covenant and moved it out of the way. And he fulfilled the promise that God made to Abraham and Jesus in Genesis 12. And the promise, oh God, was made, uh, let's read it. Go to Genesis 12. Yeah. <laughs> Genesis chapter 12, glory be to God. Genesis chapter 12 shows us the promise. I'm, I'm, I'm working along here. My God, I wish I had time to get some of this out. But well, look at it. Genesis chapter number 12. Now I want you to see this in your Bible. And then I want you to see what the apostle Paul says about it. Are you still here? Yeah. Genesis chapter number 12. And I shall begin reading at verse number one. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family, from your father's house to your land. I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Are you still here? I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So here's the blessing. Here's the promise that the blessing of God will come upon all the families of the earth through one man. Through one man. Everybody say through one man. But now, go with me quickly to Galatians chapter 3. Oh, this is good. I said this is good. Go with me quickly to Galatians chapter 3. Oh, I want you to see this, my Jesus. Mm. Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to read here. Woo. 
at verse number 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, Paul tells us clearly in Romans that the law itself is not a curse, that the law is holy, just, and good. So when it says the curse of the law, it's not just talking about the law itself, which is included here, but it's talking about the consequences that should be ours as a result of falling short of it. See, he redeemed us not only from the law, but from the consequences that should have come up on us for having fallen short of it. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Watch this. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, every, uh, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, or the blessing that God promised and made to Abraham, might come up on the Gentiles, those of us who are non-Jews without a covenant, in Christ Jesus, or in the anointed Jesus, that we might receive the promise. That's the problem. The promise of the Spirit through faith. Now watch this. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Oh, pay attention. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, singular, who is Christ. Stop. So what we were just told is that in Genesis 12, when God says to Abraham, and in you shall all the nations of the earth or all the families of the earth be blessed, he wasn't just talking to Abraham. He was talking to Abraham and to Jesus. Come here, William, quick. Stand right here. Wait, 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 just stand, stand right here, stand right here, stand right here, stand right here, stand right here. Okay. Prophet Khan, come here, quick, 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 stand right here, stand right here, stand right here. Oh, Jesus, help me. Now, we were just told that when God made the promise, he's Abraham, he's Christ Jesus, that when God made the promise in Genesis 12, he wasn't just talking to Abraham. It says, now to Abraham and his seed, singular, capital S, where the promise is made. And it does not say unto his seeds, plural, but to his seed, singular, who is Christ. So the promise wasn't made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, he can read, he can read, he can read. The promise was not made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promise was made to Abraham and to Jesus, yes. saying, you are the two men Come on. Come on. Tanda, through whom all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The Jews shall be blessed in this covenant, and the rest of the world shall be blessed in this one. And come, and this one will be absorbed in this one when this one comes into fruition and that one is fulfilled. Watch me now. So he doesn't say, when God is making, I'll be God. This is not typecasting. We're just giving for an example. Watch. So he, he, he doesn't say, and to you, and in you shall all the nations of the earth, all the families. He says, and in you. So watch this. Isaac and Jacob, come here, Seth. Uh, come, come here, Pastor. Isaac and Jacob come into this covenant when they follow the faith of Abraham. Now, you don't see them. You see Abraham. But when they follow Abraham's faith, when, uh, when they do what Abraham does, they get in on the covenant because they followed Abraham's faith. But if you follow Abraham's faith, 
you won't get in. Ain't nobody saying nothing to the preacher. I, uh, I come into the covenant. Come, come here, come here, preacher, come here. Come, come here. I come into this covenant. Not by my performance. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I come into this covenant not by my performance, but when I believe on what God has done for me in Christ Jesus, I get all the benefits, all the blessing. Sit down. Do you see it? You get it, Baba? Are you getting? Lay your hands. Lay your hands on somebody close to you and ask, are you getting this? this? Keep your hand on, say, are you getting this? Are you getting this? So Isaac and Jacob get in on the covenant when they believe what God said to Abraham. Dr. Dollar and Sister Taffy and Bishop McClendon and everybody else. I'm going to say everybody else. And everybody else get in on this covenant, not by our performance, but when we believe. What God has done and completed in the finished work of Jesus of Nazareth. Now let me show you what your Bible says that that work accomplished. Go to Isaiah. Dr. Dollar, I, I'm running out of time, I know. So I'm going to be wise. I'm going to get done. Go to Isaiah. And I want you to see something. I'm going to have to make a, a, a little course cut here to cut out some stuff. But let me go here and show this to you. Are you still tracking me? Yeah. Are you really still tracking me? Yeah. Okay, now watch this. Everybody say something better for us. Better for us. Let, me, let me get to this and I'll, I'll bring this home. Isaiah 53 verse... Number 10, oh Jesus, let him that has ears to hear, hear. Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 10, watch this, talking about the work of Jesus. It said, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. Oh, this is, this is so profound. Uh, it says, when you make his soul an offering for sin, he, that is Jesus, while his soul is being made an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and shall prolong his days. Now, I need to unpack this just a moment. It says, while Jesus is being made an offering for sin, while he is taking my sin and your sin. Oh, and this is why you've got to learn to endure the contradictions when you're walking by faith in grace. Are you still here? Because when you're doing this, you're going to be put in places where people will say you're not exactly who you are. And, and they'll try to get you to prove who you are, which will actually disqualify you from being who you are. They said to Jesus, 
If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. And he is hanging on that cross knowing because I am the Son of God, I can't come down. <laughs> Y'all aren't hearing me. If I don't finish this, there's nobody else qualified to finish it. So you're telling me if I come down, you'll believe. And I'm saying I can't come down because I'm the only one who can finish this. Book. Watch it. It says, when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He's going to see who he's doing it for and what he's accomplishing. He shall see his seed, watch this, and prolong his days. And this is very interesting. This Hebrew word here, prolong, is the, is the Hebrew word arach, which means to defer or to hold back to another time, to hold back so as to be applied to a later time. In other words, Jesus, while he is doing this, is seeing what he's doing for us. And what it will mean and the Bible says and the father is gonna take what he's doing and defer it to a later time in other words he's gonna take what he's doing and the moment you and I believe what he did the father's gonna be release it on you and release it on you he's gonna release it he's gonna hold it till somebody believes it. He shall see his seed, watch this, and prolong or defer the results to a later time. Are you still here? Watch this. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Look at this, verse 11. He shall see the labor of his soul. God shall see the labor of Jesus' soul and be satisfied. 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 And be said, he shall see what Jesus did and be satisfied. No, you missed it. He shall see what Jesus did and be satisfied. So my faith doesn't satisfy him. I'm not trying to satisfy him with my faith. He's already been satisfied. Jesus satisfied it. I receive. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jesus satisfied it. Now, do you understand the burden that takes off of you yeah. while you're walking by faith when you understand I'm not trying to satisfy Jesus today? Dr. Donald, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I was reading that a few years ago, and he said, son, I want you to understand, every morning when you wake up, you wake up to a satisfied father and a seated high priest. You didn't hear what I just said. A satisfied father and a seated high priest. I don't have time to go into this, but the Hebrew writer tells us that Jesus, after his resurrection, goes into the holiest of all in the heavens with his own blood to appear before the Father for us as our high priest. So he is functioning as high priest in the holy of holies, in the tabernacle of the heavens. If I had the time, I would read to you the book of Hebrews and show you where God sells, tells Moses, make sure when I tell you to build this tabernacle that you build it exactly according to the pattern that I showed you. And the Hebrew writer tells us because what Moses was building was a replica, a shadow of things as they are in heaven. So God said, build it exactly like I showed you. Because I got this done already. And I will not live in a house of your design. Stay with me. And the Bible says when Jesus got done, he's functioning as a high priest fulfilling the old covenant until the new one comes into force. It is for this reason after he is resurrected and he meets Mary in the garden and she doesn't recognize him. 
Why? Because people don't recognize you when you're walking in grace. When, when you're a new creation, they don't recognize you. Uh, she doesn't recognize you. And, and the Bible says, when he says, Mary, she says, Rabboni, and she reaches out to touch him, and he says, don't! Don't touch me, because I've not yet ascended to my Father. Now, what is that all about? That is him fulfilling the old covenant type of the high priest. Once he had washed and purged sins, he had to go into the Holy of Holies and appear before the Shekinah glory of God, the Ark of the Covenant, once a year, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and make an atonement for the sins of the people. After he did that, he would come out, and the way the people would know that the sacrifice had been accepted was if the high priest came out, because if he didn't make the sacrifice, according to the order, he would be struck dead when the Shekinah glory of God descended. Now, the Hebrew writer tells us in the Old Covenant, the priest had to do this every year. Once a year, why? Because the work of finishing all sacrifice for sin was not completed. So, watch this. In the Holy of Holies on earth, there is no seat in the most holy place. And the reason there is no seat in the most holy place is because the work of dealing with the sins of the people was never finished under that old covenant. But your Bible says that this one man, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down. the right hand of the majesty on high forever waiting. <laughs> Give me this mic. I, I, I asked the Lord, I said, God, why did he sit down? He said he didn't sit down because he was tired. He sat down because he was finished. Nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. No sacrifice for sin. Lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister, and say, he's out of time. <laughs> and look at your other neighbor and say, he couldn't keep yelling like that for much longer anyway. He... <laughs> now watch it. <laughs> I'm going to finish right here. So now... What is this something better for us? Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20 and 20. Oh, watch this. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch what happens. And remember, this was in your Bible when you came in here. <laughs> what is this something better? Galatians chapter 2, verses 20. And 21, I, Paul's right, have been crucified. I understand. I was with him through the whole process. And the work of dealing with sin is finished. Now there's another way to deal with it. And I'm not going to get into that because that's another message for another time. But I have been crucified with Christ. Watch this. It is no longer I who live. In other words, uh, it's really not me. Watch this. But Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I'm not living it by my faith alone. <laughs> See, <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, e e and them. <laughs> were living by their faith alone. But you and I have something better. We are not living by our faith alone. I am crucified with God, nevertheless I live. But the life that I now live in the flesh, I'm living by the faith 
of the Son of God. I am living by what I know he finished and accomplished for me. I am not living by just what my faith can do. I am living by what his faith has already done. I am believing what his faith has already done. I am declaring what his faith has already done. I am receiving what his faith has already done. Now watch it. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, that faith in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 is not yours. Did you see that? It's not yours. How can you say that? Because I can read. <laughs> now, you got to go back. Let me just do You got to go back to chapter 4 real quickly. Verse 20. I'm, I'm done. I need three minutes and I'll be done. You got to go back to chapter 4 verses, I think, 23, 24. If you can put that up real quick. How do you know that's not your faith? Because he tells you reasoning from the old covenant to the one where and he says now it was not written when when the bible says abraham believed god and it was accounted to him for righteous he says now that was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him let me read on but also for us in other words when god said to abraham your faith has been accounted to you for righteous he said god didn't just say that for abraham he said it for us why it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up jesus our lord from the dead watch this reading on verse who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification he was raised because of not to justify us no you didn't he no you didn't get it he was raised not to justify us he was raised because of the fact that he had already justified us. His resurrection is my receipt. That the work is finished. It's my evidence that everything God says about me is so. It is my evidence that he paid the price in full. So he justified me by his faith, by what he did. Now, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, I'm closing. Look at this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, that's not mine, that's his. Having been justified by faith, we have, and your pastor helped the whole body of Christ understand this, we have in the Hebrew shalom with God. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Having been justified by faith, we are in a position now. See, the old covenant saints weren't in this position. We are in a position now where nothing is missing, nothing is lacking, and nothing is broken. We have shalom with God. Watch this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, watch this. Watch this. I'm done. Uh, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Uh, my faith is to keep me in the realm of believing and seeing that I'm getting better than I deserve all the time. My faith is to get me and keep me in the realm where I can believe and understand that God is doing for me beyond what I have merited and he is empowering me beyond my ability. Watch this. Through also, also through we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the glory in the manifestation of the goodness of God. Lay your hand upon yourself. Dr. Dollar, I thank you for the opportunity to share the word of his grace with this great people. And God told me to tell you, you right now are coming into the something better as a people. You're coming in. It's already up on you. And God sent me here just to confirm 
affirm, strengthen, you are moving into a whole nother dimension of world changing. Oh, you should clap your hands and thank God. Look at this. The Bible says we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. I was reading that, Dr. Dollar, meditating on it several years ago. And the Spirit of the Lord said, pay attention, son. He said, this is why for some, the walk of faith has become tedious and heavy and burdensome. He said, I never intended it to be that way. But he said, notice, I said, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And when the Holy Spirit said that to me, the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 said, we walk by faith and not by sight came to me. And the Holy Spirit asked me, he said, son, have you ever seen anyone who can walk before they can stand? I said, no, sir. I've never seen anyone who can walk before they can stand. He said, that's why many of my people, even though they've been taught the word of faith, they're not seeing the results. He said, because you cannot walk by faith until you are first standing in grace. You, you, if you try to walk by faith and you're not standing in grace, your faith walk will become burdensome, tedious, scary. And Jesus never intended for that to be. Now, will you lay your hands up on somebody next to you? I'm finished. The apostle is coming. And I call him apostle because he is one. And I know you know that. Flow with me, son. Byron, flow with me. Lay your hands up on your brother. Lay your hands up on your sister. As I was in prayer this morning, I saw a vision. I saw a very large angel standing over this dome. God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, salute the prince. And I said, God, what is going on? I saw an angel hovering over the top of this dome. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, my son, Dr. Creflo Dollar, has been a man of God for many years but he said declare in the house that he is no longer only a man of God but I have now made him my man there are many men of God but there are not a lot of men who are God's men in a region, in an area, in a stewardship. And I say this by permission of the Holy Ghost and man of God, you can stop me anytime you want. But what I say now, I say by the Spirit of God. When you become God's man in an area, in a region, he begins to deal with you differently. He begins to deal with you like he dealt with Abraham when he was about to go into Sodom and he said can I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do why Abraham was God's man in the region and he was basically saying I can't do anything in this area unless I inform my man about it God gives men and women stewardship of regions and purposes and plans for seasons. And I declare to you that World Changers Church and this apostle and this woman of God now are coming into 
a dimension of stewardship not only of this church but of this entire region and an apostolic grace is coming upon them for the message of the grace of God in the body of Christ nationally and internationally now you know this but the Spirit of God told me to speak it and Dr. Dollar I'm gonna give this to you sir I'm gonna ask you just to come if you would and sister Taffy I'm gonna ask you to come if you would and I am going to ask you sir by permission may I speak a word to the both of you M may I thank you sir I want you to stretch your hands towards the angels of the house and I asked the Lord this morning I said God do you want me to say this publicly or do you want me to say it privately because I can say it to the man of God privately and he, and, and he said I'll let you know when you're finished because <laughs> I guess he didn't want me to get nervous <laughs> prophesying to this man of God, this woman of God who are now senior statements, stretch your hands toward them and pray in the spirit. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me, Dr. Dollar, that because of your humility, because of your integrity to my word, because you have taken a no-nonsense approach, to my things and wanted to make them real and simple and authentic to my people I have honored you and I will continue to honor you but I will raise you now this day in the sight of all the body of Christ for you have been humble and you have said no Lord it's not necessary I don't need this and I don't need to say that and I don't need to call myself that I'm just your servant but the Lord says I have made you an apostle in my kingdom an apostle of faith an apostle of grace an apostle in the body of Christ and did I not say my son because you have integrity and because you look to the integrity of my word but did I not say he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward understand you do not take the title and mantle of apostleship for your sake but you say it so that the grace of that apostleship can be imparted and received everywhere you go for you have seen and you even inquired of me not long ago says the Lord you saw the generals leaving you saw this one go and that one go and you inquired of me Lord what is this and the Lord says it is because there is a new day something better is coming and I have made you a steward of my grace and an apostle of this message understand my son though you do not want the ceremony and you do not have to have a big to do you must embrace the office and not be ashamed of letting men and women call you an apostle for an apostle you are this you know and I confirm it this day in the sight of many witnesses that you may know this is not something you take upon yourself but something I have given says the spirit of grace for my body worldwide in the name of Jesus if you agree with that word and you receive it I want you to lift your hands I want you to open your mouth I want you to shout unto God because something better is upon you now and receive the apostle Dr. Creflo Yes. <laughs> 
I, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm a big crybaby now, so I <laughs> did not our hearts burn. <laughs> Lift your hands up right now. Receive everything. I believe God spoke to you. I believe he spoke to you some specific things you needed to hear. I believe that the, the burden has been removed. I believe now you've declared and you've received that you're righteous, not because of you, but because of him. And as long as Jesus is all right, you are right. If he believes you're healed, you believe you're healed. If he believes you're delivered, you believe you're delivered. If he believes that you're righteous, you believe you're righteous. If he believes you're prosperous, you believe you're prosperous. That's what living by the faith of Jesus is all about. I'm healed by the faith of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are on the stream and those of you who are in the dome today, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to pray this simple prayer that you can receive him. And when you receive him, a lot of stuff goes away. A lot of things go away. The struggle goes. You have to be seated with him because rest is the highest kind of faith. You got to rest. You got to learn to enter into that rest. You've been struggling and fighting and got to do this and got to do that. It's time to rest in his finished works. Pray this prayer with me if you're over the stream, if you're here, Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of my sins. I receive the free gift of your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Sit on the throne of my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. And I declare in Jesus' name, that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Now, if you're watching on the stream, if you just prayed that prayer of salvation with us today, text the keyword, I'm saved, as one word to 51555, and we'll provide, if you'll provide your name and email address, we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Now, what we're gonna do is, now listen, we're going to complete the worship service. Somebody say, how you do that? Through gift giving. <laughs> Through gift giving. This even changes what we've heard about giving. We're giving not to try to get God to do something. We are giving out of gratitude and thanksgiving for what he's already done. Bring unto the Lord glory due unto his name. Do what? Bring an offering and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. This is an honor gift. This is a gift of gratitude and love and an appreciation for what you received today, for what God has done last week, for what he's done last year. It's gift giving. Jesus walked in the book of uh, Matthew chapter two and he saw Jesus around the age of two and the Bible says that reaching in the treasury, they bowed down and worshiped him. Let's complete this. Thank God for the songs. Thank God for everything that we've heard. But there's something about this time where I'm saying, you know what, God? This is not me asking you nothing. This is not. I am giving out of gratitude and honor and worship because of what you've already done. So now you're going to have to deal with, well, I'm doing this to get God to do something. No, no, it's done. It's done. I'm thanking God for it. Now, God still promised that he will multiply the seed sown, but from your heart, it's always how you do it and the attitude in which you do something in that really opens the door for God 
uh, to, to, to help us, and this is where I am right now, the just shall live by complete dependence upon God. And that's how we live. This whole thing is coming down to either you declare your independence away from God or you declare your dependence for him, complete dependence on him. So you can be seated. Let's go ahead and prepare our gifts and prepare to give. And it's so good to see you guys today. You know, normally we're having this during the Super Bowl. And it feels so good not having a rush to try to get you out so you can get prepared for your Super Bowl stuff. Amen? That's why they added that extra game for us. <laughs> Listen, if you're online giving, you have a QR code there as well. You, have, you can text World Changers uh, to 74483. You can call that number on your screen. You can mail to that address or you can go to the websites and you can use your PayPal if, you're, if you have one. If you're here and you want to give uh, through envelopes, if you lift your hands up, this whole thing's got a whole new meaning after the day service. I'm like, dude, I am in here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> lift your hands up and uh, the ushers will go ahead and take care of you. Taff and I want to express our thanks to those of you who came today, that you trusted us to provide a safe environment. The cool thing about it is nobody if you're in here, you, you passed our test. <laughs> you had a good temperature and all those other kind of things. But I'm, I'm telling you, and I have to say this to you, uh, some of you, you keep saying you don't feel comfortable. Let's tell the truth. Fear is dominating you. And you got to get rid of that. You've got to get rid of, you cannot allow fear to dominate you. I'm telling you, God's getting ready to turn this thing to a point and, you know, this whole thing has been set up for the Antichrist to come in and try to really deceive people. There's more to this than meets the eye. And now I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ladies and gentlemen, you do not have to walk in the fear of anything. Don't do it. If you, lo if you locate fear in, in any area of your life, now you can get up and you can easily say, well, you know, I don't feel comfortable with this, but, but at the end of the day, you, you go out, you know, you got to ask yourself, do I, have, do I have fear operating in my life? I did a teaching some weeks ago on how to know if you're operating by fear and being dominated by fear. And it's important that you know that because there are a lot of folks who are under demonic influence and things are happening in their life and they don't have a clue about what's going on. Amen. So we are thankful and grateful to all of you. And I'm believing God that will help you. And just ask, God help me. God help me to deal with this. And when you do that, it's gonna be fine. Uh, I'm not gonna come up here, I'm not, talk, I'm not gonna bring in, we're not gonna talk about what the Republicans and, 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 and the Democrats are doing. I ain't got time for all that stuff. There's too much gospel to be preached. And what you heard this morning was the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the true gospel. They're almost too good to be true news. That's the true gospel. And that's, that's what we got to get. And you're going to bump into your religion. You're going to bump into your religious belief. But that is the true gospel. And you've got to start living life where you receive what Jesus has already done. And, and it's, it's, we got to mature. We have to mature. We've got to go to the next level. And I believe that, that we are. But it's so good to see all of you in the dome this morning. We're glad to know that those of you who are streaming in, we appreciate it so much. We're so grateful and so thankful for you as well. And we believe that the best is yet to come for your lives. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ushers, go ahead and receive the offering this morning. Go ahead and give. There's QR codes here as well as out in the lobby. You have uh, some areas there where the QR code is. Somebody keeps asking me about the bookstore. It is, it is under renovation. It's going to be very high tech, a lot different. In fact, we're changing the name to the digital, the Dome Digital Store. And you're going to be shocked how things operate there. We're getting some stuff from South Korea uh, and we're moving in a whole new place where you're going to be able to go in and there's going to be this gigantic screen and you're going to be able to, with your phones, do kind of stuff. And we're going to have areas where we're going to even have people who have their phones and don't know how to do it to train people to operate. Amen. Some of y'all still coming to ask them, where's the tape for the line? I'm ready to get one. You don't even know you can get it for free. 
There's a lot of things that, that are happening here. And what a celebration, what a message, what a word. It was everything I thought and more. Amen. Praise the Lord. Guys, would you escort our guest out right now? And we're going we're to handle a little church business real quick. Those of you who, who got born again this morning, uh, I'd like for you to come to the altar. And those of you who, listen to me, those of you who, um, those of you who uh, desire to join this church today, and, uh, you know, I want you to know as a pastor, I want to pastor you. I do. And I, I want to watch over your souls. I want to accept the challenge that whatever's going on with you that God can handle it. Amen. And so two things, if you're born, if you just prayed the prayer to get born again, come on down. Secondly, if you're here and you say, I believe that I'm supposed to be a member of this church, you can come on down at this time. And as you do that, I'm going to speak to our e-church members as they come. You can come. Those of you who are online, you can go to worldchanges.org and click join at the top of the page. Or you can text join WCCI all one word to 51555 and we will send you all the benefits of e-membership. We thank God for all of you, our e-members, and we are so excited about what God is doing in your life. Welcome to World Changes E-Church. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Happy anniversary, World Changes Church International, amen? Taff and I are going on 41 years in the ministry, but 36 of them have been spent pastoring this church, and it has been a great, great, great joy. And we're just so excited about what God is doing with the World Changers Nation, amen? So excited. And all of our other churches that uh, joined us this morning for this celebration, we welcome you and we're just grateful and thankful that every word that was spoken from this pulpit, it is true also in every World Changes Church. And we are just glad about what's happening. Amen. Praise God. Well, Father, we thank you for those who've come to this altar. And I thank you by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are doing amazing things in their lives and they will never be the same again in Jesus name. Amen. At this time, if you're turning to follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're going to take you and get some things from you, minister to you. And we believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. Now, as they go, there are a couple of things I'm going to spend some time on in the future. One of them is benediction. Benediction is a final blessing. And I have to repent to you because last week you got to walk in and, and I just said, I'm going to give a little simple off the head benediction. I don't ever want to do that because I don't know what's going on in your life throughout the week. And the benediction is a spoken blessing over you, hopefully led by the Holy Spirit, so that anything you encounter during the week, I want to make sure that that, benef that, that uh, benediction has you covered. So to walk out before the benediction is given is to walk out before you get the final blessing. I want you to get the final blessing. I gotta hurry up and get in my car and get in traffic. No, no, no. The final blessing is a lot more important than you getting away from the traffic. Amen. So we'll, we'll begin to talk about that just a little bit more so that you can bring honor to that final blessing and begin to believe God. Lord, I thank you that, that whatever needs, that I need to cover me for the week, I thank you that I received that blessing. So with that said, would you please stand for the benediction? God bless you, praise God. And may the Lord God of heaven be with you all. May this week be a week of being led by the Spirit of God. May your family walk in the blessings. May relationships be restored. May God continue to perfect everything that concerns you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, over your household, over your finances. I declare that you are protected. I declare long life until you're satisfied. 
I declare that if any virus or sickness touches your body, that it will die instantly. And I declare that the favor of God will show up and overwhelm you. I declare that doors will open that will surprise you and the God of the surprise will visit your life. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Be blessed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, everybody. Happy anniversary.